that the body's done, it's time to put the throat on. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out of long enough right-sided J, so I'm going to have to use the left-sided feather and wrap it the opposite direction. Um, this is obviously not preferred, but it will do. You want to split the J as well, and that's described in Kelson. Essentially, what you do is you just put the butt in of the J feather into a vise, clamp down on it, and then you split it by pulling the two halves of the feather apart. And then I soak it in some water for a couple hours, and then I dig all the pith out of the inside of the stem, and that helps to reduce the amount of bulk and how thick that stem is, and also it makes it easier to wrap. And then just make sure you really, really tie down on that if you're using a wrong-sided feather. And put a couple of them on, just so you have a density that you're looking for. Um, sometimes, just depending on the length and thickness of the barbs and all that, you might even need to put three on. Two is almost minimum, though. And they can be a little fidgety because it is a fairly thick stem, so just take your time and make sure you get them tied in well. And once you do have them in, just trim out the stems and then spread them apart over the center line. And then you're going to pull them down and to the bottom of the side of the hook shank just to keep them out of the way for the wing. Sometimes you'll get one strand that just won't cooperate, so just pluck it out. Take your time and really make sure it's down and along the sides just so it's out of the way of the wing. And you want to try to get that throat to be as heavy as possible. And once you do, prepare your wing and you just cut out all your slips and then you stack them all together and you know obviously the uh, longer materials are on the bottom and shorter materials on top. And you know how you put that together is really just up to you. And you're just going to measure it up on your shank, and you want that wing just out past the bend of the hook a little ways. And then I transfer it, moisten the butts with a little bit of saliva, and then compress the tie-in point with your fingernails. You can see I'll kind of grab it and pinch it and push it together and put a notch in there. That just helps so that the thread can collapse those fibers easier. And then grab the whole bundle and put the far side on. And you want to kind of get it on the far side half of the shank. Put a couple wraps over the wing and then put the thread down through your ring finger and your pinky finger so you can tighten the thread. And as I tighten, I grab the butts and keep them in position and twist them back up on top of the shank and try to keep it as level as possible with the wing. Really need to tighten down on that. And I also kind of I grab the butts and I and I pull up on them and that just helps to pull any of the fibers back on top of the shank that might have gotten pulled down onto the side of the shank. Put a few wraps down after you do it as well. Again, some wax there really helps on your thread just to keep it all held down. And you just repeat the process with your near side wing. Moisten them and collapse the tie-in point down. And then hold it up and measure it out and make sure the same length. You can see I kind of coax everything back onto the near side of the shank. Sometimes just get in there with your scissors and push it back over. You don't want those rolling over onto the other side. And repeat the process. A couple wraps. Make sure the thread goes right where you need to. And as you tighten with your ring finger and pinky finger, 
keep those butts in line with each other. Pull it all up on top of the shank. And so I really tighten down on that. Now, get your thread and hold it tight, and then you just kind of run your fingers through it and just break up all the fibers. That'll give you a nice mixed wing look, and when you're done it should look something like this. Prepare your chatterer for the cheeks. Any little adjustments with the positioning is needed. far side. Again, just uh, adjust your positioning as needed. And I just trim out the excess stems. Now I support the wing and keep the thread tight and go in and trim out your butts of your wing. This wing's a little heavier than it really should have been. Um, it actually looks a lot better with less fibers than it does with more, although I almost always do a little too many. Take your time and don't cut it all at once and cut a taper into it so that way it helps aid your shape of your head. And I apply some more wax to my thread just to really make it sticky. I mean, you can see I put quite a lot on there. You want that thread to stay where you put it. Just take your time and cover up those heads and then those butts and I find if you come in with your thread at an angle along the head and then come back to the back side of the head and then put down a wrap or two going forward that just helps to lock that thread wrap in so it doesn't slip off the front and slide. As you can see doing some buggy antennas as I love the look of it. What I do is I hold my strand up to the wing and look at it, get the idea of the shape I want, and then I use my fingernail um, to either put curve in or take curve out and put the proper shape into it. And I do that on both pieces and then the tie-in point, you can see it was, it's flat, it's because I just notch it there so that way when I set it on top of the head it'll be the same length for both of them and they both go on really easy that way. And that way there's not a whole lot of fidgeting with it and drawing it down and getting it in the right place. And as long as you put the right shape into both of them, you shouldn't have to mess with it too much besides just getting them positioned into the right place so that they're both sitting at the same positions on both sides of the head. Trim out the excess from your horns.
just for durability and safety sake do a little bit of varnish and let that dry and prepare a ostrich hurl by doubling it and hold it in the bottom side of the shank with uh, using the gut to support it as you tie it in and just slowly work your way up get that tied in as good as you can and do a little single half hitch at the back of the head just so that thread doesn't move when you're wrapping your hurl and it'll be right in position to tie it off and draw that down don't drop any J hackle in there your hurl up and edge to edge wraps with the hurl and right up to where the thread is and bring your thread over the waist piece of your hurl right behind that hurl and right in front of that wing tying point. You should really only have a thread's width of thread right there. You shouldn't go forward. Just try to stack those wraps right on top of each other. And trim out the waist piece. Now do a double half hitch. Make sure you draw the thread all the way through before you feed it back through. If you don't do that, it'll kind of bunch up and just make a knot as you draw it down and complicates things. Bring that loop on the side of the hook and then I just slowly draw it down once you do get it drawn down tighten up on that really well trim out your waist Run your scissors through the hurl and that just fluffs everything back up. And then do uh, any little minor touch ups and preening that you need to do. And that's it. Uh, finished toll free pop em. Hope that helps. I've set the rain to be cold and hard I've set the sun to be bright and sharp To wake you up from your hollow dream I'll shake your bed with a thunder